Charles Payne had a great conversation today on making money with both Wendy O oh and Jason Williams about crypto, Citadel CEO Ken Griffin, and retail investors. What's up, Ape Nation? Welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, please smash the like button so we can get this video out to more people. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. All right, let's listen in to what Charles, Wendy, and Jason had to say, and then I want to mention a few things after that. All right, folks, don't look now, but crypto has been on fire, led by Bitcoin. Now, it's been the best performing asset class during this vo very volatile, turbulent time. And now the bandwagon is filling up quickly as the suits are climbing on board. Now, really, I don't have anything against traditional Wall Street, but I find it insulting when the financial media always now, I mean, have you been watching? They always bring these suits on, ignoring the true pioneers that were ridiculed, ironically, by those same people who are now supposedly expert guests. Uh, they've come down from their ivory towers because now they like Bitcoin. Well, I'm going to keep it real with you all the time uh, because, you know what, the folks that saw the light first need to be in the spotlight right now because they continue to educate the public, including my next two guests. The host of The O Show, Wendy O, and Bitcoin author, Jason Williams. Wendy, uh, you've got a huge social media following you got a youtube show a crypto newsletter and all kinds of things going on first i want to say thanks and welcome for coming on just quickly how did you know when did you see this bitcoin blockchain crypto thing and know it was going to be this revolutionary first and foremost charles thank you so much for having me on and i also appreciate the verbiage you used you said ivory tower and that is exactly what it is but when i first found out about bitcoin it was in 2011 i had no idea what it was i didn't think i was tech savvy enough or smart enough um, to kind of do anything in tech but then 2017 came around end of 2017 i kept hearing about it a lot and i decided it was time for me to kind of dump some money in see what happened i was in a trans transition part of my life and once i actually bought bitcoin i started to really dive down that rabbit hole and find out about what was really going on with the government with the federal reserve with spending with money it forced me to educate myself mm -hmm. well jason my man first of all welcome back because you have been on the show in fact Everything that you've predicted has happened so far, so tell me what happens next. Well, I think there's some uh, interesting things uh, in our future, and I'm going to focus on uh, one thing in particular. You know, we have the largest intergenerational wealth transfer in history going on right now. It's about 30 to $60 trillion of inheritance that's going to be passed from baby boomers to millennials and Gen X. Millennials will be the overwhelming beneficiary of that. Their earning potential and power is going to go way up. And then here's the opportunity. 66% of these baby boomers, uh, the children, don't intend on staying with their parents' financial advisor. 70% of these financial advisors have never taken the time to meet with these children and establish any type of relationship. So you have this mm -hmm. great wealth transfer to these digital, digital natives who are looking for digitally native assets, NFTs, you've heard of those before, and Bitcoin in particular. So you've got uh, digitally native millennials. They love Bitcoin. They want the hardest money ever created. All right. Hey, along that line, I saw today where public.com announcing crypto trading on their platform. Apparently, they're going to start with 10 coins, including Doge. So, Wendy, listen, there are thousands of coins. You know, you talked about diving in this rabbit hole. Uh, this is where it gets confusing. How, how are you deciding which ones are, are worth it? And also, you know, we all like to take a flyer, right? We all want to get that one coin that goes up 100,000 percent. How are you making those decisions? The way I make those decisions is I'm looking for things and projects that have actual utility. Jason mentioned that NFTs are super hot right now. People are very excited about them, but most importantly, the technology behind NFTs. And I think it is smart to look at alternative chains to Ethereum that support the NFT growth. There's a lot of really great projects out there. Focus on the ones that support NFTs, dive down those individual rabbit holes and see what other crypto projects can help support those ecosystems grow. And then bet on those. Jason, uh, you know, I talked about the suits coming into this. Obviously, the climbing on a bandwagon. You see them on financial television explaining all of this now. Of course, they were dissing this whole thing just a couple of years ago. Uh, but on that note, Citadel's founder, uh, uh, Ken Griffin, he slammed cryptocurrency. He says it's a jihadist call against the dollar. He also said he wished that young people who are involved in this uh, had the same energy and passion uh, that went to crypto, went towards making the United States stronger. 
I mean, what's he missing? I mean, you just kind of talked about this, right? This is a sort of attitude. Uh, does this make the United States stronger? Yeah, look, I don't ask my grandmother what the next great cell phone technology is. So when I hear these guys, the bubble gang participants, you know, I just ask, like, where's Peter Schiff? <laughs> Well, we got to get you and Peter back together again. In the meantime, it's been a fantastic having you and Wendy together. Wendy, you're remarkable. Great stuff. I appreciate it. Learned a lot from you. And congratulations on your journey. And Jason, you too, my friend. We'll see you both soon. By the way, Thanks reminder, folks, I am hosting a new Investor Revolution Town Hall. It's going to be November 9th, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Email me your questions at investedinyou at fox.com. You can also email us if you want to join us in the studio. In New York, in the studio, we're going to have a blast. Guys, I find it amusing that many traditional investors, investment managers, and institutions will speak poorly about whatever stock or asset us retail investors are interested in, and then later on, once they finally realize that individual retail investors actually knew what they were talking about all along, those same traditional investors end up buying the retail favored assets that they once spoke poorly about. And I think what we're seeing now with the suits dissing crypto and many of them beginning to actually adopt cryptocurrencies is just another example of that. Now, I am definitely not an expert when it comes to crypto and I don't want to pretend that I am. But one thing that I do understand is that there seems to be many parallels between our two favorite stocks, AMC and GME, and crypto. Both of these movements are essentially the many individual retail investors taking a stand for a more transparent financial system. And it should come as no surprise that many of the so-called smart money that hate AMC stock and GME stock stock also hold unfavorable views toward crypto, at least for now, that is, until they eventually end up adopting crypto en masse, as already mentioned. And that does it for this video, guys. Please smash the like button so we can get this video out to more people. And while you're down there, please subscribe. It's free, and it helps us out tremendously. And until next time, remember why we hold.